Hello listeners and viewers. Welcome to Kaduna State Ministry of Education radio and TV e-learning program designed for our SS3 and other students staying at home due to the coronavirus pandemic. The present administration under the able leadership of His Excellency Malam Nasir Ahmed El Rufai is positioned as always to ensure that under his leadership our students are not left behind in all areas of human endeavors especially education. Kaduna State is the center of learning. Therefore, we want to ensure that our students excel in their forthcoming examinations and beyond. Students and other learners at home are given this opportunity in order to continue learning as education is a continuous process. Different subjects will be taught in this program to assist students to perform excellently in the forthcoming senior school certificates examination being conducted by NECO and WAEC as soon as schools reopen. Teachers making presentations will always provide their names and phone numbers during each presentation and they can be contacted for questions, further explanations and or clarifications. The following numbers and contacts can also be reached for expression of any concern or observation. 090-865-0054 090-865-0054 6272. Our website is www.education.kdsg.gov.ng. Our email education at kdsg.gov.ng or education.kdsg at gmail.com. Our YouTube channel Ministry of Education Kaduna State. Our Twitter handle at Kaduna underscore MOE. Or our Facebook page, Ministry of Education, Kaduna State. Stay safe, stay at home, and learn well. Thank you, happy listening, and happy viewing. Hello, students. Welcome to another session of the e learning on radio television, Kaduna. I am Ms. Comfort K. Bakau, taking you on the subject Christian Religious Studies. Our topic today. It's a continuation of our last one, A Man After God's Own Heart. The subtopic we are taking today is repentance and forgiveness. But before we go into the lesson of today, we will now we want to remind ourselves of what we said in the last lesson. We said, who is this person that is called a man after God's own heart? In the last lesson, we said it was King David. And why was he so referred to as a man after God's own heart? We say a man after God's own heart is someone who is loved by the Lord. When they say you are one under somebody's mind or heart, it means you are well loved or you are loved by that person. So in the last lesson, we said David was referred to as a man after God's own heart because he submitted to God's will. We looked at two instances in which he submitted to God's will. When he spared, number one, when he spared the life of King Saul, who was after him. King Saul took 3,000 soldiers to the wilderness of Ziv to look for David to kill him. But when David had the opportunity, Abishai told him, let me spin him down on the ground just once. David said, I will not put my hand to kill the Lord's anointed king. So he submitted to God's will by sparing Saul's life. The second instance in that last lesson that we had when it was when King David's child died. The child that was born to him by Bathsheba, the wife of, Uriah's, of Uriah. The child was sick. David prayed, fasted. By the end of, at the end of seven, the seventh day, the child died. David now got up from his fasting. He washed, went and worshipped God. He accepted the death of this child as God's will. So in, that, in the last lesson, that was how we saw David as one who was always ready to submit to whatever God allows in his life. So we go to the, second, the topic of today, the subtopic, repentance and forgiveness. 
topic is David forgave the subheading number one is David forgave Apna. We find this story in 2 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 to 39. How did David forgive Apna? You remember, my students, the lesson we've just had last lesson? Abner, we said he was King Saul's army commander. And when David had the opportunity to kill King Saul, Abner was there sleeping beside King Saul. David spared the life of uh, Saul, and we said he called out to Abner. Abner, you are supposed to be taking care of the king, but here you were sleeping. I could have killed the king, but I did not because I feared the Lord. Okay, so this Abner, we are saying he's King Saul's army commander, and he contributed a lot to the building up of Saul's house against David. You see that even when King Saul died, Abner did what? He was still loyal to Saul's house. But then one day, King Saul son, one of his sons called Ishbosheth, did what? Accused Abner of sleeping with Saul's or one of Saul's concubines. This accusation made Abner to be very angry with uh, Ishbosheth. And he promised to do what? To transfer his loyalty to David. Abner, he said, took with him 120 men from the camp of Saul and he went to visit David. By now, you remember, by now you know, David is now the king in Israel. Saul had long died along with some of his sons, about three sons in one day. So David is now the king in Israel. Abner, we say, now went to King David and David welcomed Abner and the men he came along with. David, to show that he had forgiven Abner, he did what? He prepared a feast for them, after which he now allowed them, or he sent them to go in peace. But then, unknown to David, there's this man called Joab. You will see that Joab was David's army commander. This Joab, when Abner came for reconciliation with uh, David, Abner was not around in the house. He was not in the palace. He had gone somewhere for some war out there. So he came and he was told that Abner had come to meet King David and Joab said no. He went to the king. He said, I learned, Joab, I, I learned Abner came here. He did not come with good intention. He wants to just check or to spare out to what you have or what is going on with you so that he can now come and plan with, against you. So Joab now went out from the king, King David, and went and killed Abner, who was returning to his house. Joab, we said, he killed Abner in revenge for his brother Asahel, who Abner had killed some years back. It was not because he had in the interest of the king that he killed Abner. Abner had killed their brother a long time time ago and he went in revenge so when David heard about the death of Abner he wept bitterly he was so sad he was so angry with what Joab had done David took a lament a lament is what it's a it's a wailing song it's a song you sing when somebody dies he said should Abner die as a fool your hands were not bound your feet were not fitted. As one falls before the wicked, you have fallen. This was David. As he cried, going to where Abner was to be buried, the grave of Abner. Those of you watching the television, you will see my students, the picture of David at Abner's grave. You will see the grave there and David standing and the people of Israel thronging or following him. And David was crying, weeping. He said, Abner, will you die as a fool? 
he wept bitterly over the death of Abner. And we say, with this lament, all the people of Israel, as David was weeping, as David was crying over the death of Abner, the people of Israel joined him to cry along with him. And all the people of Israel, when they saw how he cried and wept bitterly, they were convinced that David really had forgiven Abner and that he had no hands in the death of Abner. So we are seeing the first instance of how David having a forgiving spirit, forgiving Abner, who had been his enemy all around, all along, he was loyal to Saul. But when Saul died, he came to ask for reconciliation, and David was able to forgive him and accept him. But then his army commander killed him. David's hand was not in it. Okay, the second subheading that we have under this topic, repentance and forgiveness, is David's repentance and forgiveness. We saw David forgiving Abner. Now let's see David and what he did that needed repenting. The references are 2 Samuel chapter 11, the whole of that chapter. Then we have 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 to 15, and then Psalms 51. We say, In a season when kings go to war, David did what? He remained in Jerusalem while he sent Joab, his army commander, to go and fight their enemies, the Ammonites. So as David would remain in, at home in Jerusalem, one day he was strolling on top of his, or at his root, rooftop, and he saw a beautiful woman taking her birth in the next compound. David asked about this lady, or this woman, and he was told that she was Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Again, my students, those of you watching on television, you will see the picture of David at the rooftop. You see him here strolling, just looking around across on the balcony. It's an upstairs. And as he was looking across on the other side, here was this lady bathing at the other compound. You see the picture, Bathsheba. Another woman trying to put toil on her. Okay, so when David now asks about, we said, he sent for Bathsheba and he committed adultery with her, which resulted into pregnancy. She became pregnant and she sent what to David? To King David, I am pregnant. So King David, in order to cover his sin, what he had done, what did he do? He sent for Uriah, the husband to Bathsheba, who was at the war front to come back home. Uriah came, and David asked him to go to his house and wash himself. When Uriah returned from the war front, he reported to the king who had sent for him. The king said, you've come from a war front. Go home, wash yourself, and relax. The king, what did he do? He even sent gifts along to follow. He sent his servants to take some gifts to follow Uriah with it. But then Uriah refused and he spent the night at the king's house. Uriah did not go to his house. He stayed at the palace. The next day, David was told that Uriah did not go to his house. And David made all efforts to make sure Uriah go back, I mean go to his house and meet with his wife. But Uriah refused. Uriah said he cannot go to his house while Israel's army is in the war front. And you would have expected that the king would be very happy. Here is a loyal who? A soldier. I have a loyal soldier with me who will not, who has the interest of the nation at heart. He's saying the army of Israel, they are out there in the open space. How can I go to my own house and then have some fun and some time with my wife. 
But you know, we say David wanted to cover up what he has done. So, David was not happy that Uriah has refused to cooperate with him, cooperate, so to say. And uh, David then said, okay, I know what to do. David then wrote a letter to Job through Uriah, telling Job to put Uriah where the battle was hottest or fiercest. You see again, Uriah, a very loyal soldier. See, a letter was given to him. He would have done what? He would have opened the letter or peeped it to what was written in the letter to see the content. But because he was loyal to his country and to his king, he did not even open the letter. He did not know the content of the letter. What the king wrote to Joab, his army commander, is that make sure you put Uriah at the forefront where the battle, when the enemy will come, he will be one of those that will be attacked or will be killed. And we say the command or the instruction was carried out by Job and the word was sent to David that Uriah was now or is now dead. So upon hearing the news of Uriah's death, David took Bathsheba to be his own wife. The wife of Uriah, he now took her. The husband is now dead. And after she spent some days mourning for her husband, David now brought her to be his own wife. And she now gave birth to a son. But we say what David did. God was very angry with David over what he has done. And God sent prophet Nathan to David to rebuke him for what he has done, for his actions. Prophet Nathan, when he came to David, he presented to David a story, a parable. He said to King David, in a certain city, there are two men, one rich and another poor. That the rich man had many animals, many flocks, many cattle and all. And one day, and then the poor man, only one lamb. And this lamb, this poor man, he loved the lamb. He's like, a, they eat together, they do everything together. Then this rich man, he had a visitor one day. And as he had his visitor, instead of taking from his many animals to kill and entertain his visitor, he went to this poor man who had only one lamb. And he took this lamb, killed the lamb, and served his visitor. When David, after listening to the story, and not knowing that he's the rich man in the parable, what did he do? He was very angry with this, poor, uh, this rich man of the parable. And he said what? This rich man deserved death. Hmm? for what he has done. But even before he dies, before he is even killed, he should pay back how many times? Four times what he has taken from this poor man. Nathan then said to David that he was the rich man in the parable. Nathan said to David, God has been so faithful to you. God brought you from a lowly state and he made you king in Israel. He gave you the place of Saul as king in Israel. He gave you his wives, and you had so many wives along with you. And if that were not enough for you, God will give you many others. But then you left your wives, all your many wives, and you went and took the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. It's not just taking the wife from him. You went ahead to kill him. And so God said, because of what you have done, surely I'm going to punish you. He said all this through prophet Nathan. And what were the punishment? We see the punishment that God pronounced to David. David's punishment. Prophet Nathan said to David, The sword of the Ammonites, which he had killed Uriah, would not depart from your house. You made Uriah to die. Okay. The sword of these people will not depart from you. Number two, God will raise evil against you out of your own house. Evil will come out from your own house. And you remember my students, Absalom, one of David's sons, he rebelled against him. In fact, he drove David out of the palace. David had to run away and all. Oh, 
So evil, because of what he has done, there's going to be evil. Number three, his neighbors would sleep with his wives before his very own eyes, before Israel. He said, you did this secretly, you slept with Bathsheba in a secret, but then people will, lay, will sleep with your wives in the open, in the broad daylight, everyone will see it. And then number four, the child that was born to you by Bathsheba through this adultery would die. When David had this, we see our topic, David's repentance, and we see how he is forgiven. When David had the punishment meted to him by God through Prophet Nathan, what did David say? David said, I have sinned against the Lord. When you read Psalms, I mean Second Samuel chapter 12, verse 13, we see how David said, I have sinned against the Lord. And again, my students, those of you watching on TV, you will see the picture of King David on his throne. You will see a man that is representing Prophet Nathan pointing to him. When David said, this man deserves to die, David, I mean, Prophet Nathan said to him, you are the one. He pointed to him and emphasized that he was the one in the parable, that rich man that took somebody's animals. When David had this, we said when he was called, he was told, he did not ask him, I mean the prophet, how dare you? How can you talk to me like this? Who? He did not. He now humbled himself. He repented. You can see, we say, those of you watching on TV, how he now, his head bowed down in repentance. Oh, this thing that I've done. Nathan said to David, he reassured him, the Lord also has forgiven you and has put away your sin. You shall not die. We say with this, we see that God forgave David and Bathsheba. What? Bathsheba later on did what? She later on gave birth to a son hmm? it's called Solomon, who became the wisest king that ever lived. We see in Psalms 51, it is, Psalms 51 is believed to be written by David after his sin with Bathsheba. There you see David's wholehearted repentance. With this, my students, we've come to the end of the lessons and we just want to learn some, I mean, to see some lessons that we can learn from this story. We say, David was called, number one, a man after God's own heart. Not because he did not commit sin in life, but because he had a submissive, repentant, and forgiving spirit. See, we said David was highly loved by the Lord, called a man after God's own heart. Not because he didn't commit sin, but each time he commits sin, he repented. And he's, he was willing to forgive others. In the case of Abner, who came to him. And we say submission, when you always want God's will to be done. So we are saying, if we want to be loved by the Lord, my students, we should be those like David, to accept the things that God allowed to come our way as his own will. Number two, David had a forgiving spirit. We have said it, he was willing to forgive Abner, who came to him for reconciliation, and he repented. And we saw how David wept at the death of Abner. Number three, repentance is necessary for forgiveness and reconciliation. You see, Abner came to David and he asked for forgiveness. David accepted and he forgave him. David, when he committed what? He committed sin against God. He repented and God forgave him. Next. Okay. We should show the fruit of genuine or true repentance and forgiveness. We see how David really repented and he wept at the death of Abner. He sang a lament for Abner. Everybody in Israel knew that David had forgiven Abner from the heart. Number five. God is willing or always willing at all times to forgive the repentant sinner. David was always willing to repent and God is willing or forgave David. We too, we should have this 
mind always trying to repent with every sin we commit. Number six, when you are in the wrong place at the wrong time, you are likely to do what is wrong. My students, when you go to a place that you are not supposed to be, sometimes the tendency is for you to do what is wrong. David was supposed to be at the war front. He remained in Jerusalem and in the process he saw a lady Bathsheba and eventually committed adultery with her and went ahead to kill her husband. Number seven, forgive others so that you will be forgiven by God. Remember our Lord's prayer? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. If we don't forgive other students, the Lord will not forgive us. Before I go, I have this assignment for us. Number one, repentance is a necessary condition for forgiveness to take place. Explain this statement in the life of David. Question number two, A, narrate the role of David in the death of Uriah. And B, question two, B, list any three consequences of David's action. I take the assignment again. Question one, Repentance is a necessary condition for forgiveness to take place. Explain this statement in the life of David. And we have question 2a. Narrate the role of David in the death of Uriah. And question 2b. List any three consequences of David's action. The references, we have the Holy Bible, our main reference, the NIV, the RSV are the versions that you use, my students. Number two reference, we have the Comprehensive Christian Religious Knowledge for Senior Secondary Schools by Martins I. Amechi. Reference number three, Round Up Christian Religious Knowledge by A.E. Ezechuku, V.C. Ama, and A.A. Ade Yinka. And number four reference, Essential Christian Religious Knowledge for Senior Secondary Schools by Edmond Yu Okoli. I remain Mrs. Comfort K. Bakao. My contact number is 080-2266-7567. I take the contact number again in case you have any thing, observations and all. 080-2266-7567. Stay home, stay safe, and keep learning. Remain blessed until we meet in the next lesson.